Glad you could stay with us. Now, it seems the troubles of former Senate President Bukola Saraki is not ending soon, as the home of his father, late Ulushola Saraki, was demolished earlier today at about 4 a.m. The state governor, Abdurrahman Abdurazak, had earlier announced the decision to revoke the late Ulushola Saraki's property due to alleged illegality in its acquisition. After leaving office in June of 2019, the former Senate President has been accused by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission of withdrawing 12 billion naira from Kwara State Treasury and has had some of its properties seized by the Commission. Joining us for the first time this evening is Smat Akbejoye, political analyst. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you and thank you for having me and Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. And from the last session, we have uh, Ayo Ademi Lui, legal yeah. practitioner. It's a pleasure to be here. Mm -hmm. Pleasure to have you. So let's get started. Mm. The intro said it all. He doesn't seem to be having a good time in recent time. What do you make of this demolition in spite of Saraki's uh, position that that property was legally gotten? Let me start with you. First, um, it's a bad trend where when a, a, a new party emerge, you probably want to destroy or do everything just to probably get back at your immediate, your predecessor or whatever. And this trend, if care is not taken, will destroy the politics of this nation. First, either this property was either legally or illegally or whatever, that should have been, they should have allowed the courts to take a decision that look, Probably the, the state government would have gone to a court, filing and bring but, but out. They come, are saying that they did all. not receive any no. court order. What they are saying, that's what I'm saying. That that is what I am saying. What the government should have done. What the government should have done is look. When you see that this property is in contention, and perhaps because look, you want to play safe. That look, this thing it is illegal and it has to be stopped. What about Saraki himself? No, Couldn't first, no, not even. Now wait a minute. Go to the court, seek and this thing. Seek a redress and say, look, this property has been it is it's been occupied for a very long time, but however, it was illegally acqu um, acquired. Uh, acquired, and because of that, we are revoking it. Let the law take its course. And if the court now says yes, after looking all the uh, merits of the case, if the court, if the judge now said, now says, okay, now yes, go demolish this. We know that order is from the courts. Not when you just wake up overnight and you go and demolish this thing. It is wrong. Oh, okay. but this guy, I also did the same thing in Ogun State. You resume on, on a Friday. You resume on a Friday. The Saturday was a public holiday. The Sunday you went to demolish, the Monday was a public holiday. The Monday you went to demolish a property, you said because that property is not is, is occupying the right of way. How did you know? Is it when you were there as a, uh, as a civilian? Or it is when you got there, when, when even when all the civil servants that are supposed to even aid you in doing that are still on uh, vacation or public holiday, that is a bad trend. We must not allow it to continue. All right, Ayo, let me, I know you want to chip in here. I have a Why different you... opinion. Oh, okay, okay, go ahead. Okay, the fact is that uh, based on our law, particularly the Land Use Act, speaking strictly law now, the governor has the power mm, to exercise that the right of acquisition in public interest. Let's even say, without conceding that, uh, the Saraki family acquired that land legally. The state governor still has that power to acquire it in public interest. Now, going further now, is to now ask the next question that uh, given the argument of the Saraki family that, oh, this land was a property acquired by ASA, an investment limited, and all that, does he now warrant <clears throat> the action by the, by the governor of Kwara State? As I said, legally speaking, the answer, if strictly, particularly by the provision of the Constitution of the Republic of Nigeria, if strictly on the grounds of public acquisition, 
That is what he uh, said, that that was supposed to be a secretariat for... A secretariat yeah. clinic, exactly. Now, going further is the argument that the property itself was illegally acquired. There have been no particulars shown thus far as to how it was illegally acquired. Now, that's just speaking law. Now, let's speak a little bit politically. You now discover that, of course, he got it clearly that what you just have happening in real political parlance is, it's a, yeah, is a tussle for control. But one thing that strikes my mind is that <clears throat> what we have seen, what we have seen in our country is the fact that when people get to power, they use the level of power to acquire larger properties, to acquire, in fact, there's, there's a particular health worker that acquired 300,000 hectares. But this, this particular property, now, the people that were protesting its demolition mm. were actually women. Yes, the purpose is. for that building, from what we have in the news, is yeah, that yeah. it was a place that widows go, that it, get that some is one palliative. Of the sad so what if you make that comparison exactly. between providing for the widows exactly. and building a car park, or a secretariat uh, hospital, exactly. which is of more importance. Uh, it falls back to the sad reality I was painting the other time. Our ruling class use our misfortune to, to do a kind of crossfire among themselves. It is true that the, uh, the aged people need a caring home, but it can't be on the basis of philanthropism, which for years the elite, elite in these countries have taken it as if Ed service is not a right, it's a privilege and things they can do for us on the basis of philanthropism. <coughs> it does not also mean that as against the representation of the Kwara State uh, government, that they want to build a, say, a sectarian clinic or whatever it is called, Kappa. a service clinic or car park and all that, that it has a genuine interest of the Kwara workers. So what is at play is more or less an intra-class war a competition for control, a competition for who gets what at any particular point in time. Well, we'll try and look at that a mm. little more if we have time, but we've just stated that on the surface. Let me, mm. let me come back to you, uh, Mr. Smart. What are the options for Saraki? Because he's been talking tough since this well, whole fiasco you see, started. You see? And uh, we, we know he has said that um, um, the governor should not test him uh, <laughs> or something along those lines. Well, I'm looking at the demolition has been done, what are his options? Well, you see, it's just like um, there's a Yoruba saying that whoever that um, God gave judgment to that does not accept, let's see whom he will uh, 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 appeal. appeal to. As it is now, the only person that Saraki can appeal to is the court. Saraki will go to the court, tender all his evidence, just like he have said, legal angle, legally looking at it. If you have, look, if this property is sitting on this place, and if for any reason the government felt, look, we want to acquire this property because we want to create something that will facilitate tourism because of the fact that it's closer to Niru Beach here, yeah, that they want to acquire this place. In public interest. For public interest, mm. the government has a right. First, now the government will look at it now. Do you have a CFO? If you have a CFO, they will now come again and look at the, what are the value. So in that case, they will be, you'll be compensated. But now, if you don't have value, the government could just, if you don't have a CFO, the government, what are the titles you have? Are you a genuine holder in due course? So when, when, they, when they now look at it, they could say, okay, let us compensate him on a compassion, on compassionate ground. They could come up with it. But again, you see, why I'm very, why I'm very upset about this, this, about this Saraki demolition is that these our governors, they keep doing something that attract negative interest, that attract negativity, that even try to probably engulf the state. Like in the case of Edo State now, most of the things happening in that state has nothing to do with governance. Uh, the, 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 what the people should, what the go, these governors should concentrate on is more on governance. Not when you come there, you want to take, you want to, you want to, you want to do a, a personal vendetta because of this thing. It is wrong. They are doing it as if that, that eight years will not that. Let's even assume that he is spending, he's, he's using it four years, that under four years he will but be there. But this is not just from but far it, states. Uh, let's, let's, all, let's, all, let's, let's, let's look at it from another angle. A court in Lagos, no, no. Um, just, just recently, 
um, approve the forfeiture of his Ilori residence well. as well. Mm. Uh, coupled with some of the travails he's had to go through since his uh, fallout, some people are speculating that this is a witch hunt that because he is no longer in the corridors of, of power. power. Exactly. But again, his family, his sibling, is in, all in the, the corridor of power. So how does that really connect? Collocate. Exactly. Yeah. The, just a very beautiful question you have had there. Which I, which I have told you the fact that it all boils down to the what we call the law of the parallelogram of forces. Now, it's about their class interest. I've said earlier here yeah, that where their interests merge, they will unite. Where it diverges, they would, they would, they would disunite. Now, they try, I shed no tear whatsoever for Olubo, uh, Bukola Saraki because it represents arguably uh, that's one of the elements that have, you know, as we have argued the hate national assembly, and we all know what happened. Of course, I do not want to speak on cases in court because, as a lawyer, as a trained lawyer, uh, they are matters before the before the court. But politically speaking, they represent part of the elite of this country that uh, holds the commonwealth of this country by jugular. Now, going further as to that is the fact that is travel. It's tied to the fact that it's not in power. Power is everything. Power is the power is the is the is the bulwark of the state. Actually, in no colonial economies like our own and everything. Now, based as it may, you will now find on the flip side is uh, sister, Baby uh, Sola Saraki, who is in the cabinet of uh, the anti-corruption uh, regime. Now, why do you put that? What that means is that originally they are. Intra, uh, in, the, 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 in terms of interest, mm, in terms of cross alignment of interest, Sharaki has played has been played out. Baby Sola is on that side. But now you find Baby Sola and Bukola both uniting to confront the demolition of her. Uh, their father's uh, property. Yeah, I think yes. you've made your point very uh, validly. Mm. Let's let's uh, wrap this show up with mm. uh, your final thoughts on um, his future. Do you see a comeback? Because we know that in the ni early 90s or late 90s, the Saraki family was like the movers and shakers of everything politics of Quara, in his Quara politics. Um, home state. But in recent times, do you see a comeback for him? One thing that I know as it concerns politics in this country, Never say never. Exactly. Because the Bukola Saraki that you thought, probably if time has a permit me, I would have even said, look, that some of his, uh, he has a temporary forfeiture does not mean it's a final forfeiture, mm. number one. That's true. It's not, it's not a final forfeiture. And the simple truth is that if the EFCC has valid ground for which to prosecute Bukola Saraki, the simple truth is that we we'll ask Bukola Saraki if all this property is in question, that have been temporarily forfeited, are they genuinely acquired? If yes, mm. from what source have you acquired this? Mm. Because today, I cannot even see any valid uh, company tied to Bukola Saraki that is doing well before it's emerging into politics. Mm. That is the simple truth. Because we all know that, okay, of course, it used to be in the Board of Society General. What yeah, is the, what, what, where, where, exactly. where, where, where is Society General? Where, bank, exactly. where is Society General? In some other banks, where you, in some other places, what are they doing? So I guess I, we will not, have to wait and see what plays but out however, in the coming days. But however, you can never say never for when politicians. Yeah. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for your thoughts. Yeah. I appreciate them. And of course, thank you for staying with us. We'll take our plus report now. And when we return, I'll be giving my take to stay with us. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukur Buratai, has reiterated the Nigerian Army's commitment to ensuring the welfare of troops deployed to the Northeast. General Buratai, while commissioning several projects, said personnel of the Nigerian Army will continue to perform their constitutional responsibilities. He also laid the foundation for the construction of the perimeter fence of the barracks and called on personnel of the Nigerian Army to consolidate on the gains made against Boko Haram in the last few years. My vision for the Nigerian Army places premium and of course on the welfare of the troops and their families. Thus, 
The Entrepreneurship and Skill Acquisition Center is expected to develop the skills of the youths and women here in the cantonment in becoming self-reliant. In the same vein, the transit accommodation will assist in facilitating the general administration of the large number of personnel deployed here in the Northeast who use the Gibson Jallo cantonment as a transit point. Also, the accident and emergency world will enhance health care delivery for the soldiers and their families, as well as the locals residing around the cantonment. The provision of these projects no doubt will greatly enhance the welfare of our troops and their families. We are therefore most grateful, sir, for your keen interest in looking into the welfare needs of the troops of three division and the Nigerian army in general. The center comprised departments for computer studies, barbing, hairdressing, handcrafts, block making, amongst several others. In the interim, the 23 Brigade Education Officer has been tasked to coordinate the activities of the center. The brigade has selected 53 students, as you can see before you, just ahead, who are mainly the women and youths from this cantonment and some from our neighboring com communities to attend the maiden courses, which are expected to commence on the 6th January next year. The people of Adama State are indeed grateful to the Nigeria Army for the efforts to combat terrorism in the Northeast. In particular, we are happy with the efforts of the troops of 23 Brigade to reciprocate your efforts. The Adama State government is making effort to assist in renovating the command, the government, the secondary school, and road network in Gibson Jalo Cantonment. My thoughts tonight will be a repeat of what has already been said. Our legislature needs the reminder. As happy as many are about the cordial relationship between the legislature and the executive, it is imperative that the legislature does not mar their ability to carry out responsibilities, which is first to Nigerians, devoid of negative political undertones. This will dispel the notion of being a rubber stamp for the executive. Now, focus must be on passing well-scrutinized critical bills that will impact the lives of the citizens significantly. Nigerians desire an open national assembly, one that is transparent and accountable to the public. To this end, I remind them to make public details of their budget. Replace voice voting with electronic voting so citizens can track their representatives. Stay relevant online because that's the new space with a functional and responsive website and also consider making public the attendance records at plenary. Will the National Assembly be brave enough to take on the issue of restructuring before the antenna is done? That will be bold. That will be good. The very best of deliberations as they resume plenary for the year 2020. And that's it for tonight. Thank you for watching our program. If you missed any episode, please visit Plus TV Africa YouTube channel, find the playlist and play catch up. The program returns same time tomorrow. Until then, please be well.